Hey guys, today's video is all about subfloor repair in our 1989 Airstream Excella. First, I will talk about the supplies you will need for this project, and then I will tell you all about the process that we used to fix the subfloor in our Airstream. A little background as to why we are making this video. We thought we had bought this Airstream in pretty good shape, and honestly, it is in pretty good shape. It's a 1989 Airstream Excella, 25 feet long. And we bought this Airstream because we didn't wanna do a full off the body restoration on this thing. We do not have the skills to do that. And we don't have the time to do that. We wanted to be able to get this thing out on the road this summer. So that's why we purchased it the way we did. But when we started to pull out like the bed platform and pulled up the carpet, we noticed that there were some wet spots. And in the back bedroom, the subfloor was literally crumbling in our hands. So we figured out that we had a lot more, um, a lot more repairs to do on this Airstream that we had not originally anticipated. We went to YouTube as we always do, and we tried to find some videos on how to just do spot repairs of the subfloor because we didn't want to do an off the body. And we found a lot of videos that showed the same amount of damage, you know, the same kind of issues, but not how they fixed it. So we went on a very long journey over the course of months of trying to figure out how the heck we were going to fix this subfloor safely and correctly, and finally settled on hiring somebody who knew what they were doing. So that's why we are making this video. There's definitely a deficit on YouTube on how to actually repair the subfloor. So we thought that we would just show you how we did it. All right, so let's talk about the supplies you're going to need for this project. First, you're going to need 5 8 inch plywood. The amount of plywood you're going to need is dependent on how much subfloor you need to replace. We needed two sheets. We ended up using about a sheet and a half of this plywood. You're going to need some self-tapping screws. The screws that we used were self-drilling flathead screws from Everbuilt. They're number 12s and they were two inches long. And that, the two inches long was more than enough. They were more than long enough and we used the wood to metal ones. Next, you're going to need some cardboard to do templates of the curves and the different areas of the Airstream. Keep in mind that, you know, one side, the curve of one side and the curve of another are probably not gonna be the same. So, you know, have, have some significant amount of cardboard laying around for this project. Next, you're going to need insulation. We ended up using rock wool or mineral wool for our insulation needs. We got some Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer spray paint to put onto the frame before we put on the new subfloors. And then you're gonna need various tools, saws, drills. Multi-tool was a very important tool in this build and uh, an angle grinder. And of course the grinding wheels that go along with that. All right, let's talk process. First, you need to remove the old subfloor and insulation. After you do that, you are going to want to make sure that you have cleared all of the C channels of the wood debris. This is a very important step. You are going to be putting the new subfloor into the C channel so you can't have anything in the way. So make sure you're really, really thorough cleaning out those C channels. When you are cleaning out the C-channels, um, you need to be very careful of the bolts that are in there. They're probably every, I don't know, six to eight inches, something like that. And these bolts are securing the Airstream's shell onto the frame. You do not want to cut those bolts. Leave them in place if you are just doing a subfloor repair, which is what we are doing in this video. The tool that was most useful for us in cleaning out the C-channel was this DeWalt multi-tool. You can use any brand of a multi-tool, but the multi-tool itself really, really, really helped us to get all of that wood out. In the areas where the wood was really wet, that, that, that debris came out really quickly. But in the areas where the wood was dry, still in the C-channel, the multi-tool just made quick work of it. So be sure to invest in one of those. We have the DeWalt one linked in the description. Feel free to purchase it through that link if you like. Otherwise, just go to any Home Depot, Lowe's, any big box store, and you'll be able to find a multi-tool that will help you do this job. You will be thankful that you used it, for sure. 
Next, do any uh, belly pan repairs that are needed. For us, we had some serious belly pan um, rusting in the back and we kind of jerry-rigged it. Um, we used flex tape to repair it from the inside and the outside with the intention of bringing this thing to an Airstream repair um, facility in the fall because it's not a permanent fix, but we needed to get this done with the flex tape just so that it's watertight and so that our floor guy could come in and get this work done. And it worked really well. It's holding up nicely. After you've done any belly pan repairs that you need to do, you're going to want to grind the floor beams, the structural beams that are holding everything up. The reason that we wanted to grind these was to prep them for paint. We wanted to put on a coat of Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer and just a coat of regular um, rust preventing spray paint so that any water damage in the future is not going to hurt our structural beams. For us, we didn't have to do any beam repair, but for you, you might need to. And that is, you know, outside of the scope of this video because we didn't have to do any of that. So just use, use your discretion, repair where needed. When you are grinding the floor beams, you're probably gonna have to grind off a few of the old screws that were used to secure the subfloor to the frame in the past. I think we ended up having four or five of them that we had to grind off. So just keep that in mind. You're gonna wanna remove those so that you have a nice flat surface on these beams to put your new subfloor on. And obviously then the next step is to paint those floor beams. You wanna seal in all that rust, prevent any future rust and keep them strong for as long as possible. Step six is to put the insulation in so that it's ready to go and ready to be covered by the subfloor. We ended up using a rock wool type, a mineral wool insulation because it's water resistant and mold will not grow on it, but you can decide to use whatever your heart desires. Next, you are going to want to start by making a cardboard template of the first big chunk of subfloor that you're going to put in. You're gonna to have to do this in several pieces. For us, it was almost the whole back bedroom that needed to be replaced. So we ended up, I think, doing it in three or four big chunks. But that cardboard template is priceless because you need that to get the piece cut correctly. You don't wanna waste wood with how expensive wood prices are nowadays. After you have your cardboard template, you're gonna go out, you're going to cut it, and then you're gonna bring it back in and fit it into the area where it needs to go. Keep in mind that you want to make sure that the subfloor, the new piece of subfloor actually goes into the C-channel. That's gonna provide stability for the frame and for the shell. It needs to go into the C-channel. Now, in the C-channel, like I talked about earlier, are those bolts. They're gonna be going down. You're gonna to wanna to cut around those bolts in the subfloor. So our guy that did our subfloor ended up just doing little half circle cuts so that the subfloor could just go right around those bolts. So when you're doing your template, you're gonna to wanna to mark where those bolts are in your C-channel. It's very, very important. Um, you don't wanna just have the, C, the, the new subfloor just sitting up against the C-channel. You want it to go into the C-channel because then that's gonna support the shell onto the frame of the Airstream. It's very, very important. As far as cutting and fitting each piece of subfloor, you know, be patient. You're probably going to have to take it out in and out several times to get the fit correct, um, but it is worth the time. So just be patient, take your time and measure, you know, several times. Finally, when you get the fit correct and you've got the subfloor inserted into the C-channel, you're going to want to screw it down. So, you know, you don't need to go overboard with screws, but make sure it's secure. And then you're just gonna repeat that process. Like I said, you know, the curve on the right side is probably not gonna be the same as the curve on the left side, especially if this is a vintage Airstream. So you're probably going to have to be uh, measuring, you know, each side separately. Keep that in mind. That's it, that's subfloor repair. After the subfloor is repaired, then you can lay new flooring on the top. We just used vinyl flooring and it looks Beautiful. So that's how we repaired our subfloor. If you have any questions, 
please leave a comment. We will be very quick to answer them. You know, we want to help you in your project as much as humanly possible, because let me tell you, this was very frustrating for us for several months. We had kind of hit a brick wall, like how the heck are we gonna do this without having to tear, you know, the whole floor out, um, which we just did not wanna do. So yeah, that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Again, if you have a question, please leave a comment. We are very fast to respond to our comments. And if you love Airstreams and RV travel, be sure to subscribe to our channel as well. All right, thanks a lot. Have a good one.